good morning everyone and welcome back. Cumberland Outdoorsman here with you again here in my den at my workbench and this is a continuation from the previous video that I posted where I featured an old Remington 22 rifle that I had just recently acquired and in that video I shared with you the fact that these old rifles if they're well taken care of are really great shooters you know they're extremely accurate and they can hold their own with any new or modern 22 rifle. In this video I'm going to show you how to properly disassemble the trigger assembly and reassemble it the right way. And uh, for those of you that own these old rifles, whether it's a 580, 581, 582, or a Remington Model 788, this video will apply to you. Uh, the trigger systems on the Remington 540, like the 541S or 541T, are slightly different, but you could probably still make use of this video because they're basically the same, okay? So I would probably include the 540 series rifles in this as well. Uh, what I've got here, I went ahead and took the liberty to remove the scope before the video and also I removed the barrel action from the stock because I'm refinishing that stock and it looks like that's going to be a really nice uh, walnut stock that came supplied with this old rifle. You never know what's underneath the old finish until you get that off of there and sand the wood down to a nice fine finish and start applying the uh, linseed or true oil, whatever you decide to use, to discover just how beautiful the wood can be underneath. And this one here is going to be a nice one, folks. I was very pleasantly surprised. So anyway, what I've got here on the table is the barrel to action and some tools that we're going to need. Let me show you what I've got here. I'm going to pan down here. Now, I think I've got enough lighting here. I'm, I'm not real sure. But uh, let me show you what I've got here. First of all, I got the barrel action. This is the bottom metal, the trigger guard, and the floor plate, and the screws that hold that in place. So we'll, we'll keep that out of the way. I'm going to go ahead and put those in the trigger guard. I've got a dummy round here that we're going to use to test the trigger with. I'll put that in there as well. And then I've got some basic tools. I've got a gunsmith screwdriver here with the proper head for the screws that apply to this action. I've got a couple of punches, small punches. A pair of needle nose here for grabbing things. This is a real fine pair of needle nose. And then another small screwdriver that we're going to need. And then a small mallet or hammer will do. And you're also going to need a block of wood. Now this is really soft pine wood so that we're not going to scratch or damage the bluing or any of the metal surfaces here. This trigger housing is made out of aluminum so you've got to be careful with this. It, it can be easily damaged and you don't want to cause any kind of unnecessary harm to this soft metal housing here. Here is the main action screw that screws into the bottom of the receiver. This holds the barrel to action into the stock very firmly. That's quite a massive bolt actually. You know, that's probably overkill for a 22, but that's an attribute to how well these old guns were made because they didn't they didn't skimp on much. I mean, a few little things they could have done better, but basically speaking, the uh, metal parts are good quality, high quality. And of course this is the magazine. We'll set all this stuff out of the way and get ready to take this action apart. Now if you own one of these old rifles, 580, 581, 582, or 788, the way to remove this bolt is really simple. A lot of people can't figure it out, but it's so simple. You don't need any tools, you can remove the bolt while it's still on the stock so that you can properly clean the action from the breech end. I always recommend cleaning from the breech end because you don't want to cause any unnecessary wear or damage to the muzzle end. I really don't like feeding anything into the muzzle of a rifle because that's a really delicate place 
and you could damage the rifling or the crown and that will ruin your accuracy. You know, that's the final point of contact with the gun that the bullet has and if there are any deformations upon exit that bullet's going to be kicked off by the gas pressure that's driving it forward. You know, it's going to throw it out of out of balance or throw it off to the side a little bit. So you want a nice uniform crown so that that bullet leaves that barrel cleanly. So always clean from the breech end, no matter what, if at all possible. Okay, I'm going to show you how to take this bolt out. First of all, I made sure that the gun was not loaded before I started the video. As you can see, it's clear. Always make sure that the gun is unloaded before you attempt any of this, and that includes removing the action from the barrel. Always practice safety first. We know that the gun is clear. And what you simply need to do is with the bolt open and in the rear position, simply push all the way forward on the safety and the bolt slides right out. Just like that. No tools required. No screwdrivers, nothing. You know, some old 22s or even some of the newer ones, you depress the trigger and the bolt slides out. You press it all the way to the rear and open the bolt and it comes right out. But uh, this is a pretty advanced design and this is part of the trigger mechanism that operates the function here. And to reinstall the bolt make sure that the bolt head here is centered with the bolt body that is with the top set of lugs you want the firing pin to be centered with the top set of lugs but on this first generation of Model 580 series rifles you need to make sure that bolt head is centered up here. Go ahead and feed it into the action carefully. Make sure it stays centered up. Depress the safety all the way in the forward position. Rotate it back and forth slightly and the bolts back in place. Okay? Same goes for the Model 788. We're going to go ahead and remove the bolt just like I showed you. And what you're also going to need besides these tools is a wooden block. This is just an old pine board. This is soft wood. And I drilled some holes in here to be able to drive out some of these pins here that we're going to have to remove to disassemble the, the uh, trigger mechanism. Okay, the first thing we're going to have to take apart, I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on this. Okay, now I'm zoomed in on this. I think I've got a, enough lighting where you can see everything pretty clearly. You can see that when you depress the safety all the way forward, it moves this bottom plunger down and back up, down and back up. See that? That part right there. What that is, that is the bolt block okay there's a there's a pin inside the receiver that goes up and holds the bolt in place so that when you pull the bolt backwards and eject the shell it, the, the bolt doesn't come out and it rides in this groove right here that's not really important right now but I just wanted to show you that the bolt stop or the bolt block is actually part of the trigger mechanism now, underneath this trigger safety here, there's a detent, and there are two tiny holes. And what that does is it locks the trigger in the safe or the fire position. And that detent under there is spring-loaded. And you need to make sure that you keep up with all these parts. Sometimes, you know, you can remove this uh, safety and that thing will pop out and fly across the room and then you can't find it. So make sure you keep up with all your parts here. First thing I'm going to do is uh, remove this E-clip. There's an E-clip right here. Okay. And be sure to keep control of this E-clip because they're also spring-loaded. And uh, 
when you pop it off there and you hear something hit the wall on the other side you know that you've pretty much lost it so keep up with all these little parts we're gonna set it over here to the side now I'm going to take this safety off you want to hold downward pressure with one finger guide the screwdriver into place make sure you stay centered with the screw don't let it slip off to the side and just back that screw all the way out keeping tension down on this trigger uh, safety plate okay now I'm going to lift it up very slowly very gently and there you see the detent and inside the housing there is a spring so we're going to keep the spring with this detent right here set that out of the way and the thing that I would probably recommend is remove all these parts and lay them in the order that you remove them that way when you get ready to put it back together you, you don't get mixed up with anything now you can remove <clears throat> this magazine guide but I'm, I'm just gonna leave it in place right now now this is a point here that I'm gonna cover and I've seen videos where they've taken these trigger housings apart and they're always doing it the wrong way okay there's a right way and there's a wrong way and this is one of the major uh, issues that I have with people taking these apart that don't know what they're doing that pin that's right there that holds the trigger housing to the action is under tension okay sure you can drive it out with it with this right here and force it out of there but you run the risk of breaking either that tab underneath or breaking this aluminum housing here you know you don't want to cause any unnecessary damage at the bottom here is a small set screw right here at the front of the trigger housing now some of them are probably not slotted they have a allen head but these earlier models are slotted screws what you want to do is back that out what that does it takes the tension off of this trigger housing and takes the pressure off of that pin right there what that screw does is it pushes against the bottom of that receiver and holds that trigger housing in a firm position always back this out first folks that's what it's there for okay I want to make sure that everyone knows that because I don't want you to damage your trigger housing here now the next thing I'm going to do is remove the trigger itself and it's held in with that pin right there there's one roll pin at the bottom that holds that in and that's where this wooden block comes in to play here okay now I'm going to remove this trigger roll pin right here make sure that your trigger housing is firmly against that board and you want to align the roll pin with one of the holes so that you can drive it out without doing any damage hold tension against the trigger here with one of your fingers and then ease up on it because you've got the mainspring in here I'm going to remove it pan out a little bit on that okay I want to get this spring out of the out of the trigger housing here and there it is this spring 
sits right against this part of the trigger. Okay? It's cradled right here. Now, it, it has been somewhat of a common practice to remove a few coils of this spring here to lighten up the trigger pull, but I'm not going to do that, and I wouldn't recommend it. I don't like altering anything that's as critical as these parts in the trigger mechanism. Now this right here is the the point where the sear engages the top of the trigger. Okay, you want to be able to make sure that that's clean and what I did is I polished that very very lightly with a hard Arkansas stone, a slip stone, just to remove any burrs but pretty much leaving the angles of the sear engagement the same. You don't want to change that any because then you can create a dangerous situation. You don't want to do that. Okay, that's a warning. So we'll set the trigger out of the way here and we'll keep the roll pin with that trigger. Right here. Okay, I set it out of the way. You got the safety with all the parts and then the trigger right next to it. Now I'm going to remove the trigger housing. And what we're going to do is drive that pin right there out. Okay, the one that holds the trigger housing to the action. There's a roll pin right here on top. Okay, now remember there's some spring tension from the bolt stop here. This is the bolt stop and it's got a spring on it. Okay, we'll set it next to the trigger up here so that we keep everything in order. I would recommend getting a, you know, a soft cheesecloth like I have here because it keeps things from rolling away you know it holds everything pretty well in place as you take them apart and then this finally is the sear okay and before I did the video um, I took the liberty to clean all this out which it was very clean actually it was there was no uh, corrosion or any kind of rust or any any issue in terms of the functionality of this trigger mechanism it is surprisingly clean for the age of this gun but what you need to do is make sure everything is clean and that's where these cotton swabs come in I'll take some of this Hoppies number nine I really like this stuff it, it's a great cleaner and also leaves a sort of a uh, residual oily film that's very very thin behind so that you know it avoids rust and and other issues okay and it also helps free up sticky parts and what you want to do is just run that well, let me get another get another cotton swab here Run that through there, clean everything out real good. Clean all these holes for the safety detent and also for your bolt stop. Make sure everything is, there's nothing, no kind of grit or any hardened grease or anything like that. The grease that was applied to these old guns from the factory sometimes hardens over the years. These gold guns, they sit around in a closet or an attic somewhere for a long time and that grease will dry up and cause this trigger to freeze up. You know, you can't even pull the trigger on them. Or it can create a dangerous situation like hang fires or accidental discharges because the trigger is not returning into the sear engagement the way it should. So it's always important to clean these up. And if they're really caked up, you know, really bad, I would recommend soaking these in acetone. Get pure acetone 
and soak it and clean it out really good. You want everything nice and clear. And then put a very, very light coat of oil on the inside of the housing and on your trigger parts so that they don't rust. And you can use this Hoppy's oil, this gun oil if you want, but make sure you apply it very lightly. And uh, what I do is I just take a drop or two on the end of one of these swabs where it's lightly oiled just like that and just run it into the trigger housing just like that okay it's still gonna see a little bit of gray material on the cotton swab that's just staining from the inside of that housing but anyway I, I know now that it's clear and it's lightly lubricated you also want to lubricate this bolt stop hole okay just a little bit don't overkill here you don't want a soppy oily mess and also in this safety detent right here Now then, now it's time to put the trigger mechanism back into the action. And the first thing you need to do, make sure that you do this correctly. You want to go ahead and reinstall the bolt stop here. And the bottom of it here goes down so that it functions just like that. Can you see that? And make sure it doesn't hang up anywhere. If there's any grit or grime in there, make sure you get that out. This should operate freely. Up and down. Just like, just like that. I don't feel any resistance or anything hanging up there. Okay, that goes in first. Then what you want to do is uh, put the sear in place. And by the way, I didn't take the sear part because it's working freely. But if that sear in your trigger housing is hanging up, it's not coming up and down, swinging freely like it should, you need to take that apart and clean it out and then reassemble it. There's just one roll pin right here that holds it in place. Okay? Now go ahead and align the bolt stop pin right here with the bottom of the receiver. Put it through the receiver, get the trigger housing positioned back in place, make sure that your hole right here that the roll pin goes through is lined up properly, take you a punch and, and put that in there, okay, hold it in place firmly, put your roll pin in place. And don't take a hard hammer, like a ball-peen hammer, and start beating on that. You want to use something soft, like this mallet that has a polymer end or a lead head just like this. And just very gently drive it into place. Because if you hit the side of that receiver with a hard hammer, like a ball-peen, you're going to put dents in it. You don't want that. We don't want to hurt any of this... Uh, surface right here. This is a nicely blued finish, well polished and everything. There's no need in causing any kind of harm. Use the proper tools. You know, if you don't have a mallet like this, then a hard piece of wood, a wooden mallet or something would, would work just as well. But just make sure not to do any damage here. Now I'm going to go ahead and drive this pin all the way until it's flush. Just like that, okay? Just like that, where it's flush, all the way. And this right here should be working just like that, very easily. Now, as you can see, when I work this trigger housing back and forth on the receiver, you can hear that there's a little bit of loose play. That's normal. Once again, what you want to do 
is tighten up the set screw here. You see you've got some loose slack right there. That set screw is put there to take all of that slack between the trigger housing and the bottom of the receiver. And that solidifies everything there. No more movement back and forth, up and down or anything. Once again, the bolt stop pin should be working freely. Now it's time to put the trigger back in place. And like I said, this trigger spring sits at the back of the trigger like this so that when you depress the trigger that spring puts tension on it to return it to return the trigger back forward like it should be okay and in the bottom of the sear there's a little square notch cut out that this uh, main spring the trigger spring sits inside of it's pretty much cradled in there so you'll need to take a flashlight when you put this spring back in there and make sure that it's seated in there and it goes to the rear just like I just showed you right there you get a close-up of that there you can see the spring inside the trigger housing okay now we're going to go ahead and slide the trigger into place, making sure that the spring stays in position. And you'll kind of have to maneuver it a little bit so that you align the hole, the roll pin hole here. Let me get my flashlight. Make sure it's aligned properly. Okay, now that's a little bit loose fitting, but we know that the trigger is aligned, ready to accept the roll pin. Hold it in place with your thumb and your forefinger and just get it started. sure this pin is flush with the housing okay now it's back in place working just like it should okay next I'm gonna go ahead and put this safety detent back in place And what I would do on the bottom of this safety plate here, the forward arm on it, is I apply a little bit of grease right here. Because to engage the safety on these 580 actions is a little bit stiff. So I apply a little bit of grease, just a small amount, to aid in the smooth operation of the safety. Okay, and when you put this down, make sure you align the hole right here. Let me pan in on that. Okay, there's a hole at the back of the receiver. That's where this pin aligns with. And the front foot of the safety mechanism here needs to be positioned between the bottom of the bolt stop and the trigger housing because this is what pulls it up and down. So let me go ahead and uh, I get some light on the subject here. I'll go ahead and realign everything. Get this pin but back in place here. Kind of wiggle it back and forth and then push down. Now hold pressure on it. Make sure it's all the way flush with the trigger housing and then start your screw here. Now the newer model 581 and 582 and 580 actions 
have a different, slightly different trigger design. And I've got one here on the desk to show you. So when I get this back together, okay, you don't want any binding right here. Okay, you, this this should this screw should tighten down. and it should still move back and forth. If you have a problem there, you can use a, a drop of Loctite or something on the threads, and you want just enough loose play here between the bottom of that screw and your safety mechanism so that it operates freely, just like that. You don't want any sloppy up and down play. Okay. Now you want to turn it over, holding tension on the safety mechanism, Keep it flush with the trigger housing. And we're going to put this E-clip back in place. Okay, hold it with the tip of your thumb, just like I am doing here, and just snap it back into place. Now the trigger is completely reassembled and reattached to the receiver. Okay, if you have any trouble feeding the bolt back into the action, remember this, okay? This magazine guide here is also the guide for the bottom of the bolt so that the bolt head stays in position, okay? You may have accidentally moved this because there is some play right here. So what you want to do is loosen that bolt at the bottom. Just, just loosen it enough where you got some play and then get that bolt head realigned. Once you've got it realigned, go about halfway rearward on the bolt and then tighten it down so that the bolt moves freely back and forth. And you should also be able to install the magazine without any binding at all. Okay, now it's time to test the trigger mechanism to make sure it's working properly. What I've got here is this dummy round. It's an empty cartridge with a plastic head on it. And the reason we want to use one of these instead of dry firing it is so that the firing pin is cushioned by the back of the empty cartridge. You don't want it driving into the steel the front of the front of the barrel or the chamber. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and load it into place. I'm going to engage the safety. Make sure the safety is engaged and squeeze the trigger. I don't feel any movement at all and you shouldn't move any at all back and forth. This trigger mechanism should be rock solid right here. Okay, now I'm going to take a piece of leather to cushion the back of this bolt. And now I'm going to slide the safety into the fire position. If the gun fires after doing this test, then you've got an unsafe trigger mechanism. You either need to go back and redo what you've done. You may have missed a step or there's a piece of debris or something. There's something wrong with the trigger mechanism. And if you can't figure it out, be sure to take it to a competent gunsmith. Okay? You don't want to take any chances here. Now, slide the safety in the fire position and it should hold. Okay? Without pulling the trigger, that trigger should stay without firing, okay, by doing this test. Now I'm going to go ahead and depress the trigger. That's the way it should be working, folks. That's the way it should be working.
Once again, I'm going to test it twice. Okay, without putting the safety on in the on position, we're going to test it again. Gun did not fire. Move the bolt up and down. That sear and trigger should stay engaged. Put the gun on safe. Move the bolt up and down. Now, slide the safety off. The trigger should stay engaged. And now squeeze the trigger. That is a safe, smooth operating trigger. And the trigger pull was reduced by at least three pounds. Okay? The trigger was exceptionally stiff when I first got this gun. And all I did was clean it and smooth some of the surfaces just to get any burrs or any dirt off of it. I didn't go any further. The trigger is still basically stock. And it really improved the trigger pull. And I know that this trigger is safe and in good functioning order now. So uh, now I'm going to show you the difference between some of the later model 580 series rifles and these early this early version here okay let me remove the dummy round here get that out of the way remove the magazine and I've got a later model 581 or 580 582 trigger assembly right here okay there at first glance you don't see a whole lot of difference I took the liberty of removing the mainspring from this one here because it just sits down in here and you don't want to put the spring in there and then depress the uh, sear because you're going to kink that spring so just leave that spring out until you get ready to reinstall the trigger but anyway just some of the main differences first of all the early version the uh, safety is a plunger right in here that actually engages the front of the trigger so it blocks the trigger from moving forward thereby releasing the tension on the sear and causing the gun to fire so this is pretty much a trigger block design and here you can see if you look closely let me zoom in on that give you a better better look at it Okay, get that centered up for you. Now here you can see the main difference in the design. Right here there's a cutout in the trigger housing where this part of the sear is actually engaged by the foot of this or the leg of this uh, safety mechanism. And when you go depress it rearwards, the safety engages the sear itself so it's actually a sear block instead of a trigger block and then when you kick the safety off it moves forward allowing the sear to go down and release the firing pin say so uh, everything else is pretty much the same but uh, I wanted to show you the difference between the early version and the newer version of the 580 series trigger mechanisms. Basically speaking, all the steps that I just covered pretty much cover this as well. Um, there's an extra pin right here that holds the safety mechanism in place where in the old version there's a screw here that holds it in place. And that pin is held on by an e-clip on the back of it okay so there's the difference I wanted to make sure and cover that because there's a lot of these rifles out there and you may have one of either of these versions and one thing that Remington has done I'm gonna have to put a light under here to show you is they've given us a little window right here 
so that you can see the amount of sear engagement with the top of the trigger where the two the two surfaces meet just like this okay when you pull the trigger forward this would represent my the trigger this hand here when it pulls forward it drops down like that and releases the firing pin so you want the amount of engagement right there where my fingers meet okay just this is just a, an illustration to show you how it works okay and they've given us a little window right here to look through to be able to see how much engagement there is there and this one here as I can see is fully engaged now on some adjustable triggers such as in the Remington model 700 you also have that window and you can literally see that sear engagement opening and closing as you adjust it these are non adjustable so just leave them alone there are folks out there that make these triggers adjustable what they do is they machine a screw hole back here and I've done it myself and it works if you know what you're doing you, got, you have to know what you're doing and you can actually make these triggers adjustable but I don't recommend that for anyone that's just an amateur or just owns one of these guns and really has no idea of uh, how that trigger mechanism works so with that being said let me give you a disclaimer if you attempt to do this make sure you follow all the steps okay if you're not confident or you're not very mechanically inclined please take your gun to a competent gunsmith someone that you can trust and let them service the trigger mechanism and make sure that they know what they're doing you know ask around ask questions are they qualified enough to be able to handle this because there's a lot of fly-by-night gunsmiths out there just like mechanics I'm sure all of you have run into that before you take your car somewhere and and they say they fix it and it's it's not fixed or even worse it's in worse shape than it was when you took it there I mean we've all had these experiences so make sure you take it to a competent gunsmith um, I don't want anyone to get hurt or at the very worst get killed because of an unsafe trigger and that was the goal of this video is to show you how to properly take it apart clean it and properly put it back together into good factory working condition no alteration at all in this video and uh, you know all we all we did was clean it and smooth it up a little bit and put it back in place so like I said you know I, I can't stress the safety enough make absolutely sure that it's safe and in good working condition before you get ready to shoot the gun you know and always keep the barrel pointed in a safe direction anytime you handle a gun and that goes for any gun not just for these rifles here you know that's for any kind of gun if you had any kind of service work done on it or whatever make sure you test it and make sure it's working properly and uh, you know we want to enjoy as much time as we can in the outdoors and you know it, we owe it to ourselves to make sure that our equipment is working safely and properly so be sure this is done right you know don't take any shortcuts and if there's any damage to this trigger mechanism just replace it you know find a replacement for it there are companies out there that make aftermarket trigger systems such as Timney a very reputable company and I would highly recommend them they come with the whole trigger mechanism and the safety already equipped and it's pretty much a drop-in design so that it works flawlessly and functions just the way it should and they are adjustable but let me also say that if you don't know how to properly adjust a trigger either learn how to do it and be very competent with it or take it to a reputable gunsmith that knows what they're doing so I'm gonna go ahead and close out this video I hope this was of some use to you folks out there that own these rifles and uh, you know I, I try to instill as much knowledge as I possibly can that I've gained through the experience of working on these guns and shooting them and I always try to do it in a very safe manner 
So remember, if you like to go hunting, fishing, camping, shooting, hiking, whatever it may be, I hope you enjoy it as much as I do. And also remember, hit the like button and subscribe. That way you'll know when more videos like this will be coming your way. So until next time, folks, stay safe, shoot safely, and take care of yourselves. I'll see you.